I'm pleased to report we won the battle, Inquisitor. When you went through that mirror, Corypheus and his archdemon fled the field. I'm not sure why. What he wanted was no longer within the temple. Perhaps. He spent so long trying to get into the temple, he probably couldn't have helped his forces by that point. Then Corypheus is finished. If he is wise, he will hide and rebuild his strength before he attacks again. He will not hide. He won't hide. You hear it. The well speaks to you. I hear something. Only one who understood such voices had used the well's power instead. Then we'd have to rely on her interpretation of them, and whatever she chose to tell us. Have I not been forthcoming enough for you, Spymaster? I told you what the well could have done, Inquisitor. You should be hearing shouts from the heavens, not whispers. Then help me. Isn't that what you came here to do? Earlier, you said you knew what needed to be done next. What did you mean? The dragon is not an archdemon. It's a dragon in which Corypheus has invested part of his power. Kill it, and his ability to jump to other bodies is disrupted for a time. He can be killed. That's no simple task. Corypheus alone is powerful, but where there's dragon. I need to summon Mithal. Whatever Mithal was, goddess or myth? There. An altar in the wilderness. That's where I need to go. I see you are determined. So be it. Are you certain of this? No. We must be ready for anything. A trap, or worse. I'll see to Skyhold's defenses in the meantime. At your order. We must plan for you to fight one last duel, my darling. This time for all of us. Once you find Corypheus, I suppose we must wait. Corypheus failed at the temple, lost us at Haven, and couldn't even kill me with an archdemon. My record is phenomenal if nothing else. Let's pray it remains so. Please be sure to. I, I hope that you'll... Maker, I wish you didn't have to go. I'll come back from this fight alive. I swear it. I'll take you at your word. <sighs> I must attend to some tasks before you draw out our enemy. Do go before I begin to cry. So... Still trying to wrap my mind around this. We went to an ancient rune where you consumed a pool of elven... elfiness, and then walked through a mirror, and wound up back here. Have I mentioned that the shit that happens to you is crazy? I don't want to think about this anymore. You want to discuss something... normal? Carry on. How does it feel to have the power of an ancient elven goddess flowing through you? Is it everything you hoped? I don't feel any different. I will try to suppress my surprise. Nevertheless, the power is yours, until Mathal chooses otherwise. What will you do with the power of the well once Corypheus is dead? I won't know the answer until Corypheus is defeated. Yet they are already asking you to answer. Restore the Chantry? Destroy the Chantry? If you do nothing, someone else will answer in your stead. Whatever you do, choose wisely. Forgive my melancholy. Corypheus has cost us much. The Temple of Methal did not deserve such a fate. The orb he carries, and its stolen power. That, at least, we may still recover. With luck, some of the past may yet survive. Thank you, Solus. We couldn't have done this without you. 
You are welcome. What happened at the Elven Temple? It's got me thinking. I should go back, shouldn't I? To Tavinta. Once this is done, if we're still alive. All my talk of how terribly wrong things are back home. But what do I do about it? Nothing. How does this relate to the Elven Temple? You encountered ancient elves. A piece of history. Something the Imperium didn't destroy. Maybe my people can atone for what we've done. There is something still left to restore. Maybe not all of us want to, but that could be altered. If you can change minds, so can I. Someone with your impeccable taste could transform to Vinter. I hope you're right. You usually are. It might surprise you to know that you're the one who inspired me. You're shaping the world for good or ill. How could I aspire to do any less? If it means proving that Tevinter can be better, that there's hope even for my homeland, I would do anything. A message from Divine Justinia. Dead people usually don't send messages. And I see you feel it necessary to inform me of this. This message was written months, perhaps even years ago, to be delivered to me if she died. I've heard of such contingency plans. A sudden death often leaves loose ends. I'm to go to Valence, a small village on the waking sea. There is something hidden there. Why hide things in Valence? What's so special about it? Justinia was revered mother at the Chantry there for many years before she became the Divine. It is a place that holds great meaning for her. Is this you asking permission to leave for a bit? Well, yes. I can't imagine I'll be away from my post for very long. And I was hoping you would agree to come with me. Will you at least consider it? One more thing. If what is hidden in Valence is as valuable as I think, we're not going to be the only ones looking for it. I shall meet you at the Chantry in Valence. Try not to delay. Though all before me is shadow, yet shall the Maker be my guide. I shall not be left to wander the drifting roads of the beyond. For there is no darkness in the Maker's light, and nothing that he has wrought shall be lost. A prayer for you, and for those we have lost. And those I am afraid to lose. You think talking to the Maker will help? I found comfort in faith when my life offered little. Perhaps you find comfort elsewhere. Corypheus will retaliate. It's only a matter of time. We must draw strength wherever we can. From moments like this, perhaps. There are fewer of those lately. There's time now. I heard reports of the events at the Temple of Matha, Inquisitor. It sounds magnificent. I hope we can explore it fully once Corypheus is defeated. I'm surprised a Chantry mother wants to explore a temple full of references to elven gods. The Maker is great enough to withstand whatever truths we uncover. Whether these elven gods were myths or simply aspects of the Maker, they are worth studying. But of course, all that must wait until Corypheus himself is defeated. Was there anything else, Inquisitor? I don't believe I've had the chance to speak candidly with a revered mother. Can you tell me about the Chantry? I presume you mean deeper questions about the organization itself. I trust the Chantry at Ostwick taught you the basics. Why does the Chantry allow only human women to become priestesses? 
The official doctrine is that elves and dwarves have turned further from the Maker than humanity. And as for men, the chant holds that they are more vulnerable to anger or passion. But in truth, it is simply political, added after Andreste's death, like too many of our beliefs. If you don't believe these restrictions are what Andraste wanted, why haven't you tried to change them? Has the current state of the world not taught you the folly of fighting too many battles at once? I chose to use what power I had to help peasants forgotten by the nobles of Orlais. I believed there would be time to address their inequality under the Chantry once we had saved them from stuff. What is your stance on magic? Andraste put it simply. Magic must serve man, not rule over him. However, those words must be put into the proper historical context. Andraste led a rebellion against the Tevinter Imperium, whose magisters controlled most of the world at the time. Even then, she never called for all mages to be put to death. She believed in peaceful coexistence. I don't recall the Chantry being as tolerant of magic as you describe. No. The Chantry is an imperfect vessel, pulled in every direction by those who would steer its course. Yet the Templars rebelled precisely because Divine Justinia was not restrictive enough. Perhaps the Inquisition will find a better way. There were calls for an exalted march to put down the Mage Rebellion. What was your opinion? It was ignorant gossip. An exalted march only succeeds when it carries the will of the people. Even then, it cannot be undertaken lightly. People are too easily frightened. We cannot destroy everything they fear. An exalted march is justified only against a true threat to this whole world. It is an offense to the Merkel to use it as a political bludgeon, or as a means of spreading the chant of light. What about the exalted march that conquered the elves? That is a hotly debated matter in some circles of the Chantry. The elves had conquered Montsemard and threatened Val Rayo itself. They were not helpless victims. But even then, Orlais was the only nation to provide troops. It was hardly an exalted march of all the faithful. The Maker wishes his world to spread by example, not by war. We win no converts with blood. Farewell. Maker go with you. I understand you are off to summon Mathal, of all things. Do the mysterious voices of the well tell you what she, in fact, might prove to be? She's a goddess. And what is that, exactly? I suggest you prepare yourself, Inquisitor. It will no doubt be most interesting. Now that you've seen the Inquisition up close, what are your impressions? Tis remarkable what you have built. I will give you that. Soldiers are camped outside Skyhold in numbers that would give any nation pause. All this in precious little time conjured from thin air through the power of fervor alone. I wonder if Corypheus suspected what he was enabling, just as I wonder what will become of all this once he is defeated. We have to defeat him first, then I'll worry about what's next. Should that happen, the world will lie at your feet, more or less. Beware the heights you reach, Inquisitor. When this is done, many will be eager to knock you back down. I'll leave you to the garden. Until next time, then. My dear, I know you must have a great deal on your mind right now, but I need to speak with you. You know as well as I how far the Inquisition's influence has spread, and how desperate the Grand Clerics have become. Our opinion will be instrumental in their election of the new Divine. What do you suggest? The Inquisition may not be invited to their vote, but our actions will certainly influence the Grand Clerics. To sit on the Sunburst throne, a candidate should have grace, charm, and a will of solid steel. 
Cassandra may lack the first two, but unless you can think of someone better, she is the strongest choice. Liliana might be a better choice than Cassandra, don't you think? Liliana is a well-meaning fool. She will do irreparable harm to countless people in the name of freedom. She proposes to abolish the circles with nothing but a solemn promise from mages not to murder children. When an angry mage lashes out inside a tower, villages aren't destroyed. The circle protects us all. Mages will die and take ordinary men with them in a war that cannot be won. Consider carefully, Inquisitor. Everything we do is a sign from the Maker to those who seek one. It's been quite the momentous day, hasn't it, my dear? How do you feel? It's not every day one absorbs ancient elven magic. Actually, between the voices and the binding oath to a possibly demonic power, I'm a bit concerned. Wise of you, Inquisitor. We cannot guess at what the lasting effects of the well might be. The Circle had little information about elven magic to begin with. Perhaps I'll speak to Dorian. Rest assured, we will find a way to circumvent whatever bargain you've made. The pieces are nearly in place. We'll soon strike against Corypheus directly. The world hinges upon your actions, my dear. It remains to be seen how this will end.